It's a weight, often like a crystal or metal suspended from a chain or a string. Um, you could even just use a necklace if you don't have a pendulum. You could put anything that's on a string that is weighted at the bottom. Um, it, it's best if it has a point, but it doesn't have to be pointed. Um, and then the pendulum is held steady and asked yes or no questions. And its movements, depending upon which direction that it swings in, is interpreted as either a yes or a no from your intuition. And we'll get into this a little bit more when we do the demonstration. All right. Um, one thing I also would like to include a little bit is because I come from a Christian background. And I know that a lot of us have possibly as well, um, the, the depth or the extent, you know, and what, how much this might influence you or concern you. But I do want to share as well, especially for others in the group and um, for anybody here um, and later listeners. But coming from a Christian background, I was taught that all of this stuff is wrong and bad. <laughs> and, you know, that basically, you know, mm, shady forces or evil forces or whatever could kind of get in and play tricks with you and all the things. So I wanted to give actually some examples from Christianity and the Bible where we actually can see it in the Bible listed in a positive light. Because yes, like, yeah, there are scriptures that are like, don't do this or don't do that. And it is like referencing specific um, divination methods or, or whatever. But there's also actually positive examples where we see this in Christianity and in the Bible. So specifically with this whole theme of asking a yes or no question, um, there's the story of Gideon and the fleece. And so in the Old Testament, in the book of Judges, Gideon basically is like being commissioned by God to like save Israel. And he's really like unconfident and unsure. And so he kind of puts out this test to God. And he's like, I need a clear yes or no. And so he lays out a fleece of, it's like um, a fleece of wool. And he says, all right, if it's a yes, then when I wake up tomorrow morning, I need this fleece to be totally dry, even though the ground around it is totally wet. And that's going to be a yes. <laughs> and then, you know, God's like, okay. And so that's exactly what happens the next morning. And then he's like, still like, not sure. He's like, no, 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 I need a second sign. So now tomorrow I need what the um, ground to be totally dry and I need the fleece to be wet. And so God's like, okay. And that's what happens. So you can see this example of like actually seeking a yes or no question clearly with a sign. Right. And so this is really no different. These kind of intuitive tools that we're using. Um, and then another example is the what's called the Urim and the Thummim. And you see this in the book of Exodus and also in 1 Samuel. So these were actually sacred objects that were used by the high priest to determine God's will. A clear yes or no answer about God's will. They were kept in the breastplate of judgment that was worn by the high priest. And so the name Urim and Thummim, like they actually possibly mean lights and perfection, suggesting that they might invo involve some form of illumination or decision-making process that indicated a clear yes or no answer. And so there are very specific examples in the Bible and the Old Testament. If anybody's more interested about this, and maybe I'll you know post this in the um in the group later as well to give examples, but because I could take way too long giving you examples, but that's another positive example of a yes or no um, tool that's used in the Bible.